Well, praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to the Discovery Channel. You know, we have a channel here in the United States. It's called the Discovery Channel. Well, I have news for the devil today. You are part of the Discover Your Ministry channel. I want to congratulate you for tuning in. You're tuning in today because you want the answer to the question, God, what is your plan? What is your purpose? What is your great will for my life? Mark Masson, what an incredible journey. What an incredible discovery that God's servant, Dr. Morris Serlo, is taking us on. What a great joy, what a great journey. And to know that not only we have the best apostle to teach us, mm. the best prophet to teach us, Dr. Morris Serlo, yeah. but we have the greatest teacher, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he is present today to teach us a little bit more. And so Holy Spirit, we just thank you today this is not the work of Morris Cirillo, but this is the work of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Lord, I pray for everyone that is viewing today, listening today, your Holy Spirit has been sent to lead us into all truth, to deliver us from the lies of the enemy that says we are what the enemy says we are. And God, today we hear the voice of the prophet of God. We hear the voice of the spirit of God saying, you are what I say you are. Amen. And today you are stepping into my end time destiny. So Lord, thank you for your word today that declares, I know the plans I have for you. Lord, I thank you. Yes. You're not trying to harm us today. God, you're not trying to point out our problems and our weaknesses, but God, you're speaking into the strength of God, the anointing of God. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Lord, we know that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in us today. So God, I ask that you would activate many today, Lord, that would be encouraged to come from the sideline, to come from their setback and to get back into the game. And Mark, today's powerful message, Brother Srila was going to take us behind the scenes in the spirit world. Amen. And he's going to talk to us today about God's master plan of the ages. You know, one of the things I did in high school, people say, did you play football? Yes. Did you play basketball? Yes. But you know, one of the things I love to do, maybe more than anything, was to play chess. They started a chess team and they needed people. And so I decided that I would join the chess team. Why and, am I saying and, and, this? And you were good? I was pretty good. I don't know. Uh, I knew uh, one opening. It was called the Re Lopez. He was a Spanish chess player and he had an opening and it was called the Re Lopez. And uh, it was an incredible strategy that he used in his chess games. And so on the announcements uh, in our high school, we had a big high school, we would win chess tournaments. And they used to call me uh, Greg Rethel, Lethal Re Lopez. I had the <laughs> Lethal Re Lopez opening. Why am I saying that? Because God is playing chess while the devil is playing checkers. Checkers, you know one move after the other, but God is about a hundred moves ahead of the enemy. And so today, Brother Srila is gonna take us behind the scenes and show us the master plan of God and how that God had a plan before you were even created to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy sin, to destroy fear, to destroy that spirit that literally tries to keep our head down, to keep us discouraged. And I love what Jesus said to that woman. He said, woman, thou art loosed. And I believe that you will be loosed today into your great destiny. So if you're ready, and I'm so thankful that you're a part of this podcast today, this Facebook Live, this YouTube, what a privilege. Let's welcome once again, day five, discover your ministry, the one and only Dr. Morris Cirillo. God is raising up a very special breed of end time 
people. God is going to take you into dimensions, heights, manifestations that some of you will be utterly amazed of how God will use you. I have a very strong prayer for you this morning. In the Gospel of St. Luke, Jesus is speaking to a small group of religious leaders and he is disciplining them. He said to them, you can discern the sky, you can discern the weather, but how is it that you cannot discern the seasons? I think the Lord was speaking to them about how they could see him and experience what he demonstrated and not understand that he truly was their Messiah. I pray for you this morning. This is not a conference of just bless me, Lord. If God does not take you before we are through this morning, past this point of what I call the point of blessing, and if he does not do something very special for you that gives you a breakthrough that takes you through the point of blessing, You say to me, Brother Srillo, what's on the other side? We're making an incredible journey here. I have to confess to you this morning, I'd like to keep you for three more days. <laughs> I'm asking the Holy Spirit to unveil to us what was that incredible secret that an early church had? What was that incredible capability? Say capability. It wasn't natural. I want you to really probe the spirit world with me this morning very deep. We have God sending his son into this world. And I trust that you will not get upset with Morris this morning. I love you so much. <laughs> How incredible the cross is. And the fact that Jesus gave his life and shed his blood. 
We take nothing away from that. The cross was only a piece of wood. The man on the cross was what we focus our attention upon. That's why you can wear all the crosses you want to. I don't care. <laughs> But they don't mean anything. A lot of people died on crosses. Jesus was not the only one. But there was a big difference between Christ on the cross and the thieves on the right and left side. Why did God send his son? You have to understand that we're in a master plan. The God that you and I serve is an incredible God of purpose. He's a God of plan. Something happened way back in the eons of time that we cannot determine. But a force, an angelic being called Lucifer rose up against God in those heavens. This Lucifer was God's right hand master angel. Beautiful, magnificent. I cannot tell you, that's why when we get to heaven, we're going to have the greatest opportunity in the eon of ages to talk and discuss about all the things that we don't understand. <laughs> How can angels have the ability to disobey God? We don't understand it, but they do. And Lucifer did. And he rose up against God. He said, I'll be greater than God. I'll dethrone him. And he took one third of all the angels in heaven, followed him in this incredible rebellion. God cast them out of the heavens. Then when God created the earth and when God breathed the life of breath into man, Satan was so angry. He couldn't defeat God in the heavens, so now he come, comes against his creatures and he gets them to do what he did, disobey God. God's master plan was always this. I will destroy you. You will not have power over what I have created. So somebody here this morning say to me purpose. So God sends his son to die on the cross? Not really. To shed his blood? Not really. He sent him here to defeat and to destroy the power of the devil. Thank 
God for the sacrifice of Jesus, but it wasn't the sacrifice of Jesus that defeated Satan. It wasn't the blood that he shed that defeated him either. It was when he paid this price that there was a link between him and his heavenly father and his father when he saw him in the bowels of the earth would not allow him to suffer the humiliation of that death and that price that he paid. So God opened the heavens and God broke the prison doors and God broke the chains of hell and death over his son and raised him from the dead. Now, can you imagine this incredible price that the Son of God paid in the master plan of God? 1 John 3, 8, so you'll understand that what Morris is saying to you has scriptural foundation for this purpose the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy. This devil is not wounded. He is not crippled. He is destroyed. Now, can you imagine with me? I told you this is going to be the greatest morning of your life. Oh, you didn't hear me. Can you imagine with me for a moment this master plan of God, him sending his son the purpose, and then God giving birth to the greatest miracle in the world. It wasn't when he spoke the world into existence. It wasn't when he put the sun and the moon and the stars in their orbits. It wasn't when he put a little dust together and breathed into that dust the breath of life and made man in his own image. It wasn't when he anointed Moses and used him to lead the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It wasn't the pillar of cloud by day, the fire by night. It wasn't when he opened the Red Sea. It wasn't when he fed them in the wilderness for 40 years. It wasn't when he rolled back the River Jordan. It wasn't when he opened the earth and swallowed the walls of Jericho. It wasn't when he closed the mouths of lions. It wasn't when he quenched the violence of fire. It was when he sent an angel to speak to a young girl. That angel calling her by name, Mary. And she with bewilderment and wonder turning and looking and seeing an angelic being became fearful. What do you want of me? I've come to tell you, Mary, you're highly chosen. 
Something is going to happen to you, Mary, that has never, ever happened before. And will you believe the prophet this morning? Yes. Something is going to happen to you today. Yes. Has never happened to you before. You're going to bear a child, Mary. I've come to bring you these tidings. Me? I've never known a man. I have never committed adultery. I'm not even married. How dare you come and tell me I'm going to bear a child? Anybody want God to use your life? You remember my first message to you in this school of ministry? Fear. When you walk out of this building today, you will be anointed so strongly, not by the oil that you're going to have placed on you or the hands you're going to have placed on you, but you will be anointed so strong because of the Spirit of God that's in this building this morning. And all fear will be broken off of your life. became afraid. And when you look at the task, please, my heart breaks. You are in the greatest moment of destiny. I cannot let you walk out these doors this morning just having been blessed. I cannot. Do you know how the angel diffused the spirit of fear in this young girl's heart? He told her, Mary, don't be afraid. And I need to spend a whole morning with you just on this one valuable truth. The ways that God will use you, please. When your life is so open and you are so tender here, you are so vulnerable here for this or that or the other thing. And that's why I pray today, God give you the gift of discernment. <laughs> what was released into Mary from the angel that broke the back of fear was the word of God. Now listen. The angel said to her, Mary, don't be afraid. And I'm just going to tell you, God is going to ask you to do things, go places. He's going to ask you to sometimes do the most silly things, but you will do them because this is not the work of a man. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> if he could make an ax head to swim and a donkey to talk. How many of you know there's no limit 
as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than man's. Let's break the mode of denominationalism and let's break the mode of organization and let's break the mode of following in the steps of man. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Hear the word of the Lord. Oh my God. What is that word, Mary? The angel says, with God, Mary, all things are possible. God's going to take you somewhere this morning. So deep. That was his divine intention to bring you here to this school of ministry. You can get blessed anywhere. But you're going to get something here that you won't get anywhere. With God, Mary, all things are possible. That means that you can become pregnant without ever experiencing sin. Anybody serve a God like that? Anybody here believe that with God all things are possible? Yeah. Oh my God. I tell you, there's an awesome power here this morning. And there's one thing about God. Please Hear this, let it go deep inside your spirit. One thing about God is he doesn't throw things out that seem to be incredible without telling you how it will happen. Now, did you hear that? Yes. See, God is not the God that confuses. He doesn't hold out hope. He doesn't make incredible promises. He doesn't make unreasonable statements and then leave you to try to figure out what he means? Is anybody getting this? Yeah. Mary, you're going to bear a child, and with God all things are possible. So how is this poor girl? Going to understand. The angel tells her how. Anybody ready here to enter into this particular dimension with God that you will know how when you lay hands on the sick? When you speak to demons and devils? When you take authority over nations? Oh my God, somebody give God a shout of praise in the house. Any 
anybody here really want to be used by God? You want to go beyond the natural mind, the natural man? It's there waiting for you today. I told you when we started this school, this will be the most important school of ministry, and I've conducted them before 20,000 people at one time, different places. The quantity is not what makes this valuable. It's the fact that God has spoken to me and given me a definite direction, and if I can get a hundred people out of this school that will take a hold of what we are going to talk about this morning, you will turn your city upside down. I don't care if you're a businessman, a housewife, a widow, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to tell you, Mary, what is going to happen to you. I didn't come to just tell you you're blessed. I didn't come to just tell you you're favored. I didn't come to just tell you you're chosen. But I came to tell you that God is going to do something for you that he's never, ever done before. Mary, don't be afraid. You read it in the Gospels. The power. Somebody say power. Power. I told you, we're making a journey in the school of ministry to discover the secret of the early church. What gave them capability? I'll tell you, it wasn't a school. It wasn't a theological seminary. It wasn't an organization. It wasn't a denomination. What was it? Can you say divine? It was divine capability. Big difference. You have any idea what's in me this morning? I don't think you do. I don't think you understand. But God has so permeated my life. In the last four months, I'm telling you something incredible. A powerful spiritual force is about to be released. a shout of praise. Don't be afraid, Mary. Now listen to this. With God, all things are possible. Get your mind off of the natural. Get your mind off of what you think has to happen to you through the natural course of natural events. Mary, the power. Now she's going to pass the line of blessing. The power of the most high God is going to come on you.
when this power comes on you, Mary, you will become pregnant. God will give birth. I don't think you're quite there yet. Who is Jesus? Somebody tell me. <laughs> who is Jesus? <laughs> then who gave birth? Give birth. That's why this church is not an organization and why it's not a denomination and why it's not a religion. Because God gave birth and he doesn't give birth to Baptists or Methodists or Presbyterians or Roman Catholics or Church of God or Assembly of God or Four Square or Independence. Why? Because he's not a God of division. He's a God of unity. That's why you can sit in this meeting be black or be white or be Chinese or be African or whatever and you don't see any of that because you're one. Oh, come up. Somebody give him a shout. Greatest miracle that ever happened happened 2,000 years ago when God gave birth and the body, the body, the body of Christ was born. idea why the gates of hell cannot prevail. The devil is not dealing with you. He's not dealing with humanity. He is dealing with God and the son of the living God. Go ahead, speak in other tongues.
is so incredible to reach the world, to preach the gospel. It is so incredible that God knew he's not dumb. Told you that the other day. God knows what we're up against because he had to face it himself. And God knew what it would take. Are you getting this? He, he knew what it would take. It would take divine enablement. Even Jesus had to have it. Why? Because he was a man. Oh, dear God. He who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, humbled himself, took upon himself the form of flesh, took upon himself the form of blood. He became exactly like you and I are. You don't think he came down here with all of his heavenly attributes, you know, and all that power up there in heaven like God? He left it all. Why? So he could go through what you and I have to go through. Exactly as we have to go through it. And he could be tempted and tested and tried, but never fail. Why? Because you can do the same. to get to one particular truth here this morning and it is true I would like to keep you for three days <laughs> let's go to Acts 1-8 are you ready don't, have, don't turn to it in your Bible you know it by heart are, are you ready Jesus is speaking. Say that with me. Jesus now, do you know how important it is when not Paul or Peter or somebody else is talking, but when Jesus speaks? Is anybody getting this this morning? Anybody realizing something is happening to you this morning? You're not walking out of this place blessed. You're walking out of this place with divine enablement. You're walking out of here with the key that can turn your city, your country, upside down just like the early church did for every city every village every town that they went to oh my god somebody put your hands together and give a good clap offering to jesus So the master is standing on the Mount of Olives and he utters these incredible words in front of him are some 500 people. They call themselves followers. But how many of you know everybody that comes under the name of Christianity are not Christians? I had the biggest battle of my life when I was 15 years of age. I came out of a Jewish orphanage. 
I had seen with my eyes the glory of God. And then when I was thrust into the Christian world, I almost backslid. Why? Because I thought every Christian was a Christian. And I found out that every Christian was not a Christian. And I had to pray it through. And I had to fight it through. Otherwise, I would have been lost. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Acts 1a, on that mountain, Jesus looks at these followers. He knows that within a few moments, he's going back to his father. He's already been resurrected. He's already come out of the grave. He's already been on the earth for 40 days. Now he's standing there and he looks at these 500 followers and he says to them, you shall receive power. Jesus knew what it would take for those that he would leave and never again see or they would never again see him. He knew what he had to leave with them in order for them to be able to continue, please hear every word I speak to you, continue his work. You shall receive power. Now, you know why I am going to reveal to you that you need this experience is because I needed it. I, I couldn't do anything except I saw my father do it. I couldn't speak anything except my father first spoke it to me. John baptized me. Oh, I can't baptize you. You're the son of God. Baptize me, John. Because this is the will of God. I have to be baptized. So he baptizes him in water. And the heavens open. And a dove comes and a voice speaks. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. And he comes up out of that water. Baptized as an example for every one of us, but something happens to Jesus of Nazareth, and it must happen to you. Why? Because God never intended to ever use anybody without first giving them an experience. God could never even use his son Jesus until something happened to him. Acts tells us what it was. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. That's why he went about doing the works of God. greatest truth of the early church is that God gave them an incredible divine enablement. It 
It's like when Paul went to Corinth. He said to those high-minded Corinthians, he said, you've criticized Jesus, you've mocked God, you've set up your own ideologies. Well, I'm coming to Corinth, and when I get there, you are going to know You see, I'm an educated man. Paul said I've studied under the feet of Gamaliel, the greatest teacher in the world. I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I am a religious man. But he said, when I come to Corinth, I just want to tell you something. I'm leaving all that stuff behind. Because what you need is not my religion. What you need is not my intelligence. What you need is not my education. Do you understand? I don't care if you can't read. I don't care if you can't write. God can use you. Read it in Acts very quickly. What happened? God anointed. Oh, Lord. Why did the Son of God have to be anointed? It's God's Son. Because he's here as a man, just exactly like you are, just exactly like I am, and he needs exactly what you need, or he can't do the job. There's no difference in Jesus of Nazareth than there is in you. Oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. You say, how do you know, Brother Swirl? Because there are no two Holy Spirits. I gotta do this quickly. Another five or 10 minutes. Are you listening? There are no two Holy Spirits. There's only one. Jesus said to these 500, you remember John who baptized you in water? And do you remember what he said? He said there's one coming after him who is mightier than he is and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with power. not depending on anything that you possess. You don't have anything that God needs. You need what God has. Oh my God. My God. Somebody get it this morning. Throw those hands up. Speak in other tongues. Somebody! Sakaba. Sandalobo. Sakaba Sahata.
the greatest weapon in the world. You got the greatest weapon in the world. Power. Holy Spirit power. Shakababa. Somebody say divine enablement. Mark, I used to love when Brother Cirillo would say that God gave birth to the church and he gave it a divine capability. And I tell you, if there was ever a day that we needed to hear this message, I love when Brother Cirillo said the greatest truth of the early church is that God gave them divine enablement. And we see in the upper room here are these wishy-washy disciples, Brother Srila would tell us, ran from the cross, denied the Lord three times. These are the great men that God would use as part of his master plan of the ages. And I love when Brother Srila would say, how could God take these wishy-washy, weak disciples, they had the same weaknesses that you have and that I have, and the way that he could do it was that he knew 
He was going to depend on something much greater. Somebody say much greater than their ability. He was going to depend not only on what he could make of them, but he was going to depend on releasing that divine enablement in their lives. Oh, Amen. And just remember when Jesus said, Father, the same way you have sent me, mm. I have sent them. Mm. And the same glory you have given me, I have given them. What a revelation that the master plan of God was to destroy, not to wound, but to destroy the devil. For that purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of God. And it says, having disarmed principalities and powers. So our enemy has no more weapon. He has been disarmed. And what do we do when we face an enemy who has no weapon? Come on. The only thing we can do is to destroy him, Amen. to work on him, to break his power because he has no weapon to fight us back. We are fully equipped for total 100% victory oh, in this, in this, amazing spiritual journey the Lord is taking us through. <laughs> God is so good and I feel that divine enablement here. And here's what I want to encourage you today as we go out today. This is what I take away from this message. You see, Jesus didn't just destroy a devil that's out there that has horns and a big tail. I want you to know something. The greatest weapon of the enemy is this one word called lie, the devil is a liar. What does that mean? That means the devil has a voice. Bible says when we introduce in the book of Genesis to this character called the serpent, called the devil, the way that we're introduced to him is with these words. He has a crafty voice. He came to Eve and he said, I want you to know that voice over your life that tries to accuse you that voice over your life that tries to confuse you, that voice over your life that tells you what you are not, that is not the voice of God trying to cut you down to size. That is the voice of the enemy who has already been cut down to size by Jesus. The apostle Paul said this, who is he that condemneth? Yea, Rather, it is Christ that is risen, who ever lives to make intercession for you. And I declare, my brother, my sister, there are two voices over your life. There is a voice of an accuser, but there's a much greater voice of the intercessor. And Jesus is praying for you. Jesus is the one that gave you and I this divine appointment to be a part of the Discover Your Ministry, School of Ministry. Lord, I pray for our viewers today. I pray for our listeners today. Lord, that you would arise, that your voice that says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Your voice that says greater, is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Your voice that says, I see something greater in you. And I see something greater for you than you see for yourself. Your voice that says, I know the plans that I have for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. Do you know, Mark, the other day I was at the wall praying and I know that you go to the wall and intercede and I want to encourage you send your prayer requests in, use the comment section, use the phone number, prayer ministers are standing by. One of the powerful anointings on this ministry is an anointing of prayer, an anointing to agree with you. I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit speak to me that word from Jeremiah saying, Greg, I know the plans I have for you. I have heard it many times, not to harm you, but to prosper you that I never heard this before. And he said, and to give you 
an expected end and began to talk to me about these latter stages in my life. And he said, Greg, everything that I have promised you is going to come to pass. You can have an expectation in the end of your life. The Bible says that when God called Abraham, he was one man, but when he blessed him, he became a great nation. Some of the greatest things that God has done through the lives of his men and women throughout the word of God didn't happen in the first 90% of their life or the first 80% of their life. Jesus' life, his last 10%, his last three years were the greatest years of impact of his life. And I declare your best is yet to come. And so Father, today I thank you for this encouraging school of ministry. The reason it's a school with a difference is because it is not a school that was designed to tell us what we don't know, but this is a school that was designed to remind us who we know and what we know because of who we know. And so Lord, I thank you today that you are not holding our past against us. You're even telling us today, forget those things that are behind, press forward to the prize, the mark, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I declare that God's reward is upon you. I declare the double portion from the life, the anointing, the ministry of Dr. Morris Cirillo, a prophet of God, an apostle of God. We stand on the grounds of the Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center Pavilion Theater. And in Jesus name, we're not connected by accident. And so we pick that mantle up today God, we hear your voice, even through your servant, telling us it's time for you to take that mantle and begin to allow me to use you to meet the needs of the people that are around you every single day. And so, Father, we thank you that we are stepping in to a discovery of who we are and what you've called us to be. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Well, I can't wait for us to continue. Mark, tomorrow it's going to be a powerful time together. Brother Shrillo is going to release an incredible impartation. We are on an incredible journey. I tell you what, I will never be the same. No, and you, you don't want to miss tomorrow. No. The message tomorrow that we need to take the gospel outside mm. of the church building. Yep. That's what we need to hear. And it's gonna be giving you practical instruction on how to do it. And he's going to bring us into a revelation tomorrow that's gonna to break frustration off of your life. So many of us are frustrated because we feel like we're not fulfilling the place in ministry that we feel like that we're called to fulfill. But I declare to you that ministry is a process. I declare to you that the Bible says that before Joseph's dream came to pass, there was a test. And the Bible says that the Lord tested Joseph's character and then he fulfilled his dream. And so I can't wait. Tomorrow is going to be awesome. I want to encourage you just a few more days that you're able to take advantage. You talk about making an incredible investment in your future, in your ministry. Make sure you take advantage of this beautiful leather bound Morris Cirillo prayer reference Bible. This is normally a $120 value. Our School of Ministry students are the only students in the world that have the opportunity just for the next few days to have this delivered to you for your gift of $39.95. Listen, we're just wanting to sow into your life. Take advantage of it. Make sure you pick up knowing God's will for your life. There is no greater position of strength than knowing that you know. I love what you said yesterday or the day before. One of the great truths from Morris Cirillo's life was he was unshakable in the calling of God. He knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that he knew that he knew what God had called him to do, what God had called him to be. 
And when you have that as your bedrock, the storms can come, but you will be steadfast and strong. And so we love you today. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bring somebody along with you that needs to hear this message. On behalf of Mark and our incredible team, this is Greg Morrow reminding you once again, you are a very important part of God's end time plan. And I know this, God has not planned any defeats for you. See you tomorrow, live from Legacy, in Jesus' name.